Manager with Pluralsight, and welcome to Design Development Techniques for Interiors. So, the goal for this course is I want to be able to take you from being able to model generic things, really simple walls and floors, and I really want to show you how you can develop these things by working basically with all the main things you can imagine we'd work with in an interior space. The floors, the walls, the ceilings, and I even want to show you how to work with scheduling and doing a little bit of rendering as well. But before we do that, I want to show you how, ways that we can actually peek into this model. And basically, that's what this module is going to be set up for. We're going to learn how to work with the floor plan to kind of verify things that are going on in the floor plan and work with uh, ways to make adjustments if we need to. But I also want to show you how we can set up some 3D views and even create some 3D walkthroughs. And the reason why we're going to do those first is because I want you to experience um, some, one of the real big, big benefits of BIM. Yeah, we can set up a view beforehand, but we can start working with our model and make changes where they need to change or develop our design. And as we're doing that, our model and those views we created early are automatically updating. Now, you may want to drop in your camera later on as you've already developed your design. But I find that having views and things like that already in place is a great way for someone who hasn't truly experienced some of the great things about BIM to actually experience them. I can set up views, make changes, and things automatically update. Now that's magic, especially coming from a world of 2D design where if you change a line or you need to make a change, you've got to change the line. There's not a lot of change management. You've got to redraw, recopy, erase. So things don't automatically adapt. So with that in mind, let's jump into this generic model that we have on the screen here. And let's start working and see how we can explore the inside. So I'm going to jump to a 3D view really quick. So one of the first ways that we can actually peek into this model, and we know it's really the model, look at all this grayed out material, is one with floor plan. So let's do that. So in my project browser here, I'm going to go ahead and jump to my floor plan underneath plans here. So we'll go on level one. And when I do so, I can actually use my wheel to kind of scroll in and out. If I scroll up, it scrolls in, scroll back, it scrolls out. And the great thing about a floor plan is it's another way to peek into your model and it's another way to kind of verify things and make changes. With a collaborative tool like Revit, a lot of times you'll get past the model and sometimes you need to just check and make sure things fit nicely. And that's where the floor plan and the other views we're going to be working with come in handy. But for now, we'll focus on floor plan. So let's scroll in here to these first rooms here together. So the thing about floor plans is when you're working with your floor plan, what I change in my floor plan is going to affect what's in my physical model. So I have to keep that in mind. So if I wanted to check on maybe, let's say we want to make sure all these doors are positioned right, I can see I need to do that because the spacing looks a little off between this wall, this door, this wall, and that door. Well, the great thing we, or great tool we have to work with are temporary dimensions. So if I click on an element, you'll notice these blue dimensions appear. Now, if we were to click on any one of these, we can actually start making changes. So I can actually determine the exact distance I want um, to happen. So in this case, 2, 4 is the correct dimension. So this door checks out for me. But if I wanted to come in here and click on this door, I noticed, you know what, this dimension's off by about a foot. I can click on the number and then change that number. But I need to be careful not to click on this area here because what this will do, it'll actually change your temporary dimension into a permanent dimension. So if we were to click on it, that permanent dimension would stay there. You can actually see it moves around. I can hit escape and it's there. It's in, it's part of my drawing. It's an actual dimension. That comes in handy if you don't need to make changes. But in our case, we're still developing our design. I know things need to, can change a little bit, but I'm not too worried about making things permanent just yet. So I'm going to control Z just to go back. So let's go ahead and click on that same door again, leaving this as a temporary dimension and not clicking down here. Just click on the actual number here and let's type in the correct value. Keeping in mind, I'm going to make sure I use the correct annotation for whatever units I'm working in. For me, I'm working in feet and inches, so I'm going to say two feet four. And it automatically adjusts that door to its positioning. We can do one more really quick. I'll come here. Um, I could check this one. I know this is correct, 2 feet 4 inches. But this door looks a little off, a little suspect there. So I'm going to go ahead and simply click on the number, type in 2 feet 4, and boom. Quickly making adjustments. But you can see the benefit of BIM. So I'm working in a floor plan, but it's actually adjusting my physical model as well. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful concept. So with that in mind, there's another thing we can do while we're here in the floor plan, and that's set up a camera for our 3D view, which is going to be really powerful for us 
as we're designing and developing, but also when it comes time to visualize, visualize this and create maybe a rendering, we can actually use a camera to get that accomplished. So this is a good stopping point here. We know how to jump to floor plans, orbit around our model, and play around with temporary dimensions uh, in order to shift building elements. But we also know, if we ever needed to do it, how to turn those temporary dimensions into permanent dimensions. Simple concept, but super helpful, especially when you're developing your design and things change a little bit. So now we're going to get a little bit more into this, and I'm going to show you how we could stick around in this floor plan, but we're going to use a camera to set up a 3D view, and we'll also show you how you can name some views. All right, so I'll meet you in the next clip. We'll work with some 3D views and your camera.